Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to skim coat a painted popcorn ceiling. You probably already know that these are one of the most difficult popcorn ceilings to remove if they've been painted. So I'm going to show you my tips and tricks of getting rid of a popcorn ceiling and turn it into a masterpiece. And if you missed part one of the skim coating series, I showed you how to exactly mix the joint compound to skim coat over a popcorn texture. And I also showed you all the tools needed to mix and skim coat. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you a sneak peek of part three where I do the second round of skim coating. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification. Let's get into this video. I'm using a 14 inch drywall taping knife and a 16 inch drywall mud pan for this skim coat project. Okay, so this is an older painted popcorn ceiling, so it basically will not scrape off. There's no other options but to either skim coat or put new drywall over the top or demo the ceiling and hang new drywall. So the customer opted for me just to skim coat this popcorn ceiling and then do a skip trial texture when it's all done. So uh, that's all going to be uh, later in the series. So stay tuned for all that. Um, basically, I'm getting the joint compound up on the ceiling. I'm going to smooth it all out. But. You can see I'm placing the mud on one side of the knife or the other. That way I'm not piling it up. And also I'm not making a mess. It controls where I put the mud. And you want to keep your joint compound a little thicker than you would if you were skim coating a smooth surface. So I barely add any water when I'm mixing up the joint compound to skim coat over a painted popcorn ceiling or any type of heavy texture, you wanna keep the thickness of the joint compound as it comes out of the bucket, basically. Just thin out any bubbles or make it nice and creamy. So again, I'm just wiping it down after I got the mud up. I'm putting pressure on the right side of the knife and just lifting the left side so I don't leave a line. And you can see these chatter marks or those little ridges. I'm going to smooth those out again. I'm going to go the opposite direction as I'm doing right now. I'm going to apply a little more joint compound though. So this is going to be a really good base coat. I get a lot of questions on why I use the all-purpose joint compound for skim coating. And the reason is there's a lot more glue in it. And so it's a lot stronger and the adhesion is a lot better. To me, the light weight mud is just a little too soft, not as strong. So here I'm going again in the opposite direction, which is going to take most of these ridges away. And again, this is the first coat. I'm going to do a whole nother round of skim coating. So doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want to make a mess or have big piles of mud anywhere. You want to keep it consistent. Now between coats, I do not sand. I'll take my six inch drywall taping knife and just kind of scrape any high areas or ridges before I do my second round of skim coating. As you can see, it, it turns out pretty smooth just on the first coat. And you might be able to get away with it since we're doing a skip trial texture. But I always like to do two skim coats. It just comes out a lot better. The good thing about it is if you're doing a, like a skip trial texture, you do not have to sand the ceiling if you kept your coats tight. Maybe a little scraping on some ridges. And I do have a video that I'm going to be putting out of this project where I did exactly that, just scraped between the skim coats. And when you're pulling, you wanna keep the side of the knife that's going over the popcorn kinda of raised, or you're gonna get some heavy chatter marks or ridges.
this will take i give it 24 hours to dry it'll probably dry a little sooner but 24 hours for drying time is a good rule of thumb all right so here's what the ceiling looks like after that little bit of skim coat all right got it three quarters of the way skim coated All right, got that popcorn ceiling skim coated. And coming up in part three of this video series, I'm gonna show you how I do the second round of skim coating. And I'll also show you how I don't have to sand in between coats simply by using my six inch knife and scraping any ridges or high spots. Again, there's the placement. The left side is just floating over, trying not to leave any ridges. Also coming up in this video series, I'll show you all the finer points of skip trowel texturing after the second skim coat dries. Gotta mix up the skip trowel to do this 12 by 12 ceiling that I skim coated. It was a popcorn ceiling, probably about a cup. So I got my hawk, got my 14 inch knife, scooper. If you watch this whole video, leave a hashtag drywall tube in the comments. That way I know who's watching these videos. And if you want to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. If you've got a friend that's a contractor or DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching.